Most light aircraft have a fuselage built of steel tubing. You can repair it successfully and safely if you follow a few basic practices. The damage here is typical of what you can expect after a crack up involving the fuselage. As with any other job, of course, you'll have to find out all about the damage before you start work. This will mean a thorough inspection. You can easily see that this longeron is bent and that a diagonal truss is bent. However, you'll have to find out whether this is all of the damage. So the next thing to do is to remove the finish from the damaged areas of the tubing so you can inspect the metal itself. Wear goggles while you buff the tube. When you've exposed the bare steel, you can make a close inspection. Examine the tubing closely with a magnifying glass, particularly the cluster wells and bent areas. Close inspection will show up many cracks like this one. You will have to replace this section of longeron. Now you have the damage well defined. The diagonal truss is only bent, not cracked. It can be straightened. The longeron must be replaced. Always do the straightening work first. It's a good idea to use a portable work table so you can have your tools right at the airplane. In this case, the truss was bent because of stresses set up by the bend in the longeron. You should relieve the stresses before working on the truss. To do it, cut through the longeron with a hacksaw. Now you can straighten the truss. You'll need a length of strong channel iron and some hardwood blocks. You can use a large C-clamp to apply pressure. Make your first setup so as to apply pressure where the bend is greatest. As you tighten up on the clamp, the tube will be bent back straight. The more you apply pressure, the more it bends back. Toward the end, you'll have to apply quite a lot of pressure. When the truss is approximately straight, allowing for spring back, remove the blocks and channel iron. Check the tube with a straight edge. Too much allowance was made for spring back and the tube is now bent beyond the straight position and must be bent back a little. Apply pressure in the opposite direction and continue to straighten the tube until your checks with the straight edge indicate that the tube is perfectly straight. Now check it for roundness with the template. This is perfect here. But over here it's not so good. Mark the spot. You can round out the tube with formed hardwood blocks and a clamp. The rounded section of the blocks must fit the tube very closely. Give the tube a moderately hard squeeze. Check again with the template. This is OK.
Now, if you really want to be on the safe side, just double check the tube for straightness all around. And if it's okay, you can go ahead and repair the longeron. Now here are the four major steps you will follow. First, you'll remove the damaged section. Then, secondly, you'll cut and fit a new section. Thirdly, you'll have to prepare internal reinforcement sleeves. And fourth, you can weld the new section and the sleeves into place. That's the general procedure. But what about the details? Well, first, what does the manual have to say? You'll find that it has complete specifications for replacing tubing. There are several methods. The drawing for this type of job shows where the tube should be cut and welded in relation to the cluster weld. It also shows that the cut should be made on an angle of 30 degrees with the longeron. The first job is to cut the damaged section on a 30 degree angle. You'll find this easy if you'll prepare a block like this with 30 degree angles. Clamp the block to the longeron so one side of the block is along the place you want to cut. Make your 30 degree cut using the block as a guide. Cut both ends the same way, but on reverse angles. Check for accuracy with a bevel protractor. This cut isn't quite right, but you can dress it down with a file. Clean the burrs off, too. Check it again. Both ends. Dress and trim the cuts. until they check perfectly on the 30 degree mark. Now, you'll have to check a dimension. When you cut the longeron, the distance between station points at the cluster welds may have changed. You'll have to find out and fix it if necessary. Get out the manufacturer's drawing and find the dimension for the two station points you want. Adjust a trammel to the exact dimension given in the drawing. Use a good, accurate instrument. Draw center lines at the cluster wells to locate the station points. Put one trammel point on a station mark and check the position of the other point in relation to the station point at that end. You can see that the trammel point is outside the station point. This shows you that the structure has sagged a little. You'll have to fix this next. Set a little block against the cluster weld and put the point of the spreader against it. Tighten it enough to hold it in place. Spread the structure a little. And check with the trammel. Not enough. Spread it some more and check again.
This time it's just right. Now the next thing is the material for the replacement section of tubing. The replacement section must be the same material as the original tubing and it must have the same outside diameter and the same wall thickness. Measure off the length of the new section remembering to allow one eighth of an inch less at each end for the welding gaps. The ends of this new section must be cut at 30 degrees to match the cuts on the longeron. Check for accuracy. Trim off the burrs. Make a trial fitting. Be sure that you get the welding gaps correct at each end. Trim it with a file if necessary. Now check with the manual again for welding instructions. Specifications call for rosette holes in the replacement section spaced as shown in the drawing. A is the diameter of the tube. Lay out your location points for the holes according to the specifications. Lay out both ends of the replacement section. Center punch them for drilling. Drill the rosette holes. The next thing to do is to make the internal sleeves which go inside the replacement section and longeron stubs. The material used to make the internal sleeves depends on specifications in the manual. The table shows that when the original tubing is 4130 steel with an outside diameter of one inch, the internal sleeves should be seven eighths of an inch outside diameter. And if the original wall thickness is 28 thousandths of an inch, with 4130 steel, the sleeve should have a wall thickness of 35 thousandths of an inch. The drawing shows how long you should make each sleeve, five times the diameter. Lay off the length of the sleeves on the sleeve material. Cut the sleeves to length. Remove the burrs. That takes care of the sleeves. Now go back to the longeron. On each stub, you'll have to lay out the locations for the rosette holes according to specifications. Center punch and drill the rosette holes. You'd better check the sleeves and the stubs just so you know they go through all right. Then you can mark the rosette hole location on the sleeve. Mark both sleeves the same way.
Now you can set the replacement section in place with the sleeves inside the stubs and inside the new section. Work the sleeves into position with a scriber or some other sharp instrument. Here's where you'll be glad you made the reference line of the rosette hole on the sleeves. When it's in the center of the rosette hole, you know the sleeve is properly positioned. Now you're ready to weld. First, take every possible precaution against fire. Spread wet asbestos on the bottom fabric and pack it around the longeron and other tubes so the heat can't travel to inflammable sections. Make a final check with the trammel to be sure nothing has slipped out of position. The job is okay to proceed. Now, call in another man to help you. Don't take a chance. Have the other man stand by with a fire extinguisher in his hands. Have him watch for flying sparks that you can't see because of your welding goggles. Now you can tack weld the gap between sections and tack weld through the rosette holes. After you've tacked, check with the trammel again. It's easier to correct a mistake now than later. If the job is okay, you can remove the spreader. Give yourself more working space. Finish all the wells. Make a final check on accuracy. Remove the asbestos. And clean the welds with a wire brush. When you've done a job this way, it'll be as strong as or stronger than it was originally. Don't forget to refinish the tubing with a rust preventive finish. Damaged aircraft tubing can easily be repaired if you will follow specifications and do the job carefully and skillfully.